guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today's video, I am going to be giving you guys an overview on the curriculum moving beyond the page. This is a curriculum that is new to us in our homeschool and we've been trying it out and so I figured I'd give you kind of like an overview video where I start going more in depth on the individual unit studies that they have. All right, so moving beyond the page, I don't feel like you hear tons about it in the homeschool community specifically on YouTube. I will link the Moving Beyond the Pages YouTube channel down below. They do a lot of unboxing videos, but I had a really hard time understanding how the curriculum worked. And so I decided let's make a video so I can share it with you guys. So this is kind of what you might be familiar with seeing. They're in these like spiral bound little units. Um, they offer tons of different options. And so you can actually use Moving Beyond on the curriculum as your full curriculum. They offer full year packages for age levels. And so they offer math, language arts, social studies, and science for all the different age levels. So you could just say, we're gonna use them for everything and do that. But what I see more commonly happening and how we are using it is just doing individual unit studies. And so if you wanna do their individual science, if you wanna do their individual language arts, social studies, um, that you can do that too. And their units are meant to either work by themselves or work together in certain aspects. And so that's what I'm gonna be explaining today. First of all, how can you buy this curriculum? Well, you can buy it directly from Moving Beyond the Page. You just log on. They have all the different options where you can search by age level, you can search by topic, by um, subject, and you can just find them that way. You can buy them as hard copies, which is what I have here or you can buy it a digital copy, which is a little bit less expensive, especially if you have multiple kids. You can buy the digital copy where your teacher lesson plans are online in your account and you just print out the student pages. Where if you buy the hard copy, your teacher lessons plus the student work pages are in here. There's also, um, you can buy them from like Rainbow Resources. And so on Rainbow Resources, you can find these, you can find extra printable packs. So you can um, get just a pack of the activities that your kids would need, the printouts of those. And so there's tons of different options of how to actually purchase moving beyond the page. I have purchased all of the above mentioned. So obviously I have the hard copy. And with this Charlotte's Web, I actually bought a pack from Rainbow Resources of the student printable pages. I think you can actually buy the student pages directly from Moving Beyond the Page. So if you're thinking about cost, these are around $16.99, I think, for this teacher's guide and activity pages. The additional student pages, if you have more than one kid, are about 4 to $5.00. Or if you buy the digital directly from them, you get the teacher's guide, all of the activities, which you would have to print out per kid is $12. And so if you have multiple kids, that might be the best option for you to get. These are smaller units. And so on average, they're meant, one of these is to work three to four weeks. And that's why if you buy their entire curriculum for like a school year, you would have tons of different um, unit studies to do because that's what you're working through as the year goes on. Now they have them broken up by age level. And so for example, the majority of mine are for ages seven to nine. One that is kind of the age range my kids fit into. Um, I have a daughter that's a little bit older, but um, the topics that they cover and the like the books and the unit studies are topics that I really wanted in our homeschool. So on the back, you can see the seven to nine overview. What they're learning if you use all of the unit studies is they're learning about environment, change, cycles, and relationships. Those are like the main concepts and that's how they work. They have main concepts and then they have the unit studies. And so within the environment, you're gonna be learning about weather, land, sound, and then you have in language arts, you have kind of corresponding books and literature studies that you're gonna be using. So for example, we did not start in order. We decided to start with Charlotte's Web because I already had the books and I already planned to do a unit study on them. So with Charlotte's Web, they recommend that uh, the water cycle unit, the science water cycle unit goes along with Charlotte's Web. 
And so I was like, well, let's try it out. And so that's what we've been doing. We do our language arts lesson uh, with Charlotte's Web, and then we do our science lesson with the water cycle. And they don't directly go together. Each can be done completely independently, but they do kind of feed off of each other. And so that is where you're gonna get that kind of cross knowledge. Your kids are gonna remember things easier because they're hearing it in these multiple units as you're working through them. So. We are doing two at the same time together and I feel like it is completely doable along with our other curriculum. So my daughters still have math curriculum, they still have writing curriculum that they're doing, grammar curriculum. And so I'm not using this as a full language arts, I'm using it more as like a reading and kind of just a enhancement supplement to those other courses that we're doing. However, you can use this as your standalone language arts curriculum, all of that. What I do like is that science tie-in because we just haven't been doing science. I just don't know a specific science curriculum that has fit in where we can really dedicate time to until we found this because again, it's that same format, that same flow that we're already used to and so it was super easy to just incorporate it. The reason I'm not showing the water cycle one is that is the one that I have as a digital download. So I'm gonna tell you what I like about the hard copy and what I like about the digital copy. So the hard copy, I'm just a person that likes things printed out. It's easy for me to just grab this, flip to the lesson, read my teacher guide portion, and go from there. But there's, you know, the activity pages in here. And so I read my lesson, well, my daughter needs this activity page. So I'd kind of have to rip it out. Um, I don't think you're supposed to make copies of these um, unless I, you know, if it's for your kid, I think that's okay, but obviously you can't sell them or anything like that. Um, so that is the downside of the physical book where online I have my teacher's guide. I just have to log in and read through it and then you can print these as a PDF for your kids. Like I said, it's just more what you're comfortable with. Um, I like the physical things because it just helps me. I can run this downstairs. I don't need to be on my phone or on a computer when I'm trying to do school with the kids. I can just open it and go. But there is a huge price difference as well, especially if you're going to be doing multiple of these units. So let's explain kind of how these work. Now, they're all a little bit different because some are science heavy, some are social studies, some are reading. All of their units are tied to specific books. This one, obviously, we're reading Charlotte's Web. That's the only book we need for this one. Our science one does have one book, but we only read that book for two of the lessons. So um, we you can buy the books directly from moving beyond the page like in a package or we use the library we're only going to have these books for like two to three weeks so i don't see the point of buying them so we use the library for the resources we use audiobooks we use youtube to do read alouds if they're like smaller like picture books um, my favorite thing is having my kids have a hard copy of the book and listening to the audiobook so I'll get the hard copy from the library, get the audiobook from the library, and they just follow along reading. That's what works best for us because my kids like the audiobook, but they need to follow along so they don't get distracted. Um, so that's just kind of what works out for us. If your kid can listen fully to the audiobook and maybe color or whatever, then that would be a great option too. How these work is your first page is going to tell you all the lessons. So in Charlotte's Web, there's seven lessons, but some of the lessons you work over a two day period. And so that's what I kind of mean where it can be three to four weeks. We only school three days a week. We are doing these every school day. And so it's taking us about three and a half uh, weeks to get through them. So pretty plain and simple. Once you go to the lesson, this is for you as the parent and teacher. And so it kind of gives you like, what are they going to be learning today? Some definitions, some skills, what materials do you need for the lesson? So when you guys see me doing my weekly planning, I'm looking here. Okay, what do we need? If we're doing multiple lessons, then I go to each of those lesson pages and I write a list of anything that we don't have. Honestly, I'm not finding too many crazy things in these units that you need. I think so far for the science one, I've had to buy Skittles and cotton balls. And so most of the time you probably have stuff like that around the house. So I don't see anything crazy. So there's kind of like your overall, sometimes I read it all, sometimes I don't. It's just depending on what it's kind of 
telling us to do and then you move into your activity so this is like the main part of moving beyond the page so every lesson for every day you have between one to four activities that they recommend that you do now obviously i don't work for that company i bought all of this on my own i don't know the intention i don't know if you're supposed to do them all um, but I am telling you right now, we never do them all. And that doesn't make me feel like I'm wasting my time. It just makes me feel like I have options to choose from and I can choose what works best in our homeschool and which works best for um, either of my kids. So I'm using this with a second grader and fourth grader. I'm using this as like kind of a family study. Even my four-year-old sometimes sits in when we're listening to the books or coloring or I can find him something else to add on. So I will look at the activities beforehand and I will say, okay, we are going to do this one. We're not going to do this one. And then I kind of prepare myself. Sometimes the activities are a journal assignment. They say, here, go journal these words. Sometimes it's a um, question and answer. After they're reading, they have questions they need to answer. Sometimes it's just writing a poem. Um, and most of the activities are actually in your book as activity sheets. So it's not that they're an activity in the sense of something you're gonna have to plan and prep for. They're really just, okay, go fill out this flow chart. You know, that's the activity. So that when they're like that, we may do two a day. Um, the science ones sometimes are more hands-on. So when we were learning the water cycle, one of the activities was with using Skittles. All I did was you take 100 Skittles and you divide them up by certain quantities to show how much of the water on earth is drinkable water. That was so simple, but I got overwhelmed because I'm like, oh my gosh, there's Skittles and there's measuring. But once I actually did it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this was like the easiest activity, but my kids understood it and then they got to eat Skittles and who doesn't like to do that? So just to save you from being overwhelmed, kind of like I was, I would read through them. It does take a little prep work on your end, just planning for your week. So you're not in the moment and you're like, well, we're not doing any of these activities. What are we supposed to do today? Everything in these workbooks is black and white. Um, so like this is another activity page where they do a spider poem. There's lots of different activities. Now I haven't been using it long enough to see like, is there repeat pages across the units? Are they all different? Um, but so far they're all different fun activities. My kids have really been liking them. Um, since this is language arts, you're gonna see parts of speech. So they learned adverbs one day and it actually lined up with our writing curriculum that we were using where they are actually learning to use adverbs in their writing. And so things like that just make my heart happy. That wasn't planned. It just ended up kind of lining up together. So even though this is Charlotte's Web, we're still learning about like life cycles and crossing into other subjects as well. Um, at the end of each unit, there always is like some sort of project. And so this one is a book review that they're gonna make their own book review. It gives them a couple ideas, a couple examples. And so that's like kind of their big end of unit project. And those are different for all of the units. Now for the science one, um, because I'm using kind of, I feel like maybe a younger age level than maybe what, especially my fourth grader could handle. Um, I'm using these as like my spine and my basis. Like, okay, this is the lesson we're doing. These are the things we're doing. And so in the water cycle, there was one day our lessons were talking about clouds and we got through the activities really quickly. And so I knew my kids could handle more information and wanted a little bit more. So one day we decided to use a science video off YouTube, off Generation Genius, that tied in perfectly. Another day I found a craft activity where they made the different clouds. So they had learned about the clouds from the Moving Beyond the Page curriculum, but I wanted them to do a hands-on activity. And so they used cotton balls to make these clouds. So I didn't have to do that. And do we do extra stuff all the time? No way. But this day it fit in and it was easy enough for me to plan that activity. So that's why I like using them as they're a good baseline. They have good activities, they make sense, they work together. And then if you want to add on, you can totally do that. And so um, after trying out um, these two and we're about to wrap them up, we're gonna be going into our final week of using them. Um, my kids really enjoyed them. I really enjoyed them and they're simple. I just liked 
having something like kind of guiding me, but then letting me kind of choose things to add. So the water cycle, I wouldn't really know where to start in teaching the water cycle if I were to make up that unit. So this helped me kind of plan out lessons and then be able to add on if I wanted to or just use what resources that they provided. The actual units I saw that made me want to buy this curriculum are the ones we actually didn't start with. Um, it's these two. It's The Family Under the Bridge and Economic Cycles. So The Family Under the Bridge is a book I've been wanting to read with my kids. Um, it's topics that are very near and dear to us that I want my children to understand people live differently um, than us than their friends and so that is a book we've been really wanting to read and in this story um, you learn about economics you learn that there's an opportunity cost to everything um, people that go to work every day are using that time to be away from their kids maybe away from their family they're earning money which in return gives them something back where people who don't go to work have the value of being home with their family more. And so understanding those differences, um, and, and neither is right or wrong or anything, I'm just kind of explaining the economic thought behind it. You, you're always, it's always costing you with what choices you're making in life. And in going to work and not going to work is uh, a little bit more complex than that. But um, I want to spend my money on Starbucks every day. Well, that's me making a decision where I could be investing that money every day. And that's another decision I'm not making. So I want my kids to understand difference in lifestyles and making decisions and economics. Um, I took, I work in the finance industry and I've worked in the finance industry for um, over 11 years. And I recently, in the past five years, uh, finished one of my college degrees and I had to take microeconomics and macroeconomic classes. I struggled so much because I was never taught those things. I was never taught about all of the concepts in economics and finance and investing. When I opened up this book on economic cycles, even though it's a seven to nine, which is like a second to third grade level, these are terms I was learning in college, in higher level college classes. So equilibrium in supply and demand, how to make supply and demand charts. This is something that I truly want my kids to understand and I think is extremely important and it is not taught in public schools, maybe unless you take a economics class, but those are very rare in high school levels. Another thing from this lesson is becoming an entrepreneur. It actually walks your kids through opening up a popcorn business like physically doing it. So here's some recipes, experiment, how much are you gonna charge? How much did it cost you? Um, and so when I saw somebody explaining this, I'm like, that is something I really want my kids to do. And so to be able to pair this economics lesson with the story, The Family Under the Bridge is, um, I really just liked that concept. Now, like Charlotte's Web and the Water Cycle, I kind of see how they go together, but I don't think it's like anything spectacular but these two stories i think that this is amazing and they have tons of things like that that go hand in hand to kind of you know just boost up each other so your kids understand things a little bit more i have tons of units guys so i'm going to link their website down below um like I said, the age levels obviously mean something. The older the age level is a little bit more complex, the activities. But um, if there's certain topics or units you wanna do, don't be afraid to go down or up a level because it's very adjustable. They also offer a Moving Beyond the Page um, catalog. Now I got this when I ordered through them, so I don't know if you can just get one um, off their site, but this kind of explains to you more the structure, how to choose a package, um, the age levels, how to choose an age level. And they do offer math too. I have not looked at their math ones, um, but I am, I am intrigued a little bit. So just kind of showing you guys. So these are kind of some of the ages we've been doing the seven to nine. So here's like the first concept, which is like weather, land, um, sound. And so you can see all of the different unit studies and then these are the books that go with them so they are heavily into different literatures um so if you're like that and you like your kids reading books good books 
um, and you want kind of activities to go along with it, then these would just be perfect. Let's look at the older ages. So this would be probably from more of a fifth grade. And so they're learning about relationships. They're learning about diversity and interdependence, discovering survival, different systems. So like in systems, they're going to learn about space, government and economics, the human body. So go check out their website, get a, yourself a catalog because there is a lot. And I was super overwhelmed when I first was buying it. And so that's why I'm like, you know what, we're just going to try to buy it and we're gonna see how it goes and it's something that we're really enjoying. So what I'm gonna do going forward is I'm going to make individual videos on the individual unit study. So like I said, we're wrapping up Charlotte's Web and the water cycle. So I will make its own video on Charlotte's Web and the own video on the water cycle if that's something you guys are interested in. So then you can see, you guys understand moving me on the page, but you can see what we did, what activities we did, what I added on, anything else I can kind of go a little bit more in depth on those specific units. So if I said one today that you're interested in, leave it down below in the comments and I will make sure to get that on my video planning list. I hope this video helped out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, but I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thanks for watching guys. We will chat soon. Bye.